Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us thank the Lord for gathering us this Sunday to celebrate this Holy Mass, so that by listening to God's Word and by partaking of the body and blood of Jesus, 
we may receive strength, healing, and salvation. Let us now prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist. Let us be sorry for our many sins, and let us entrust ourselves to God's merciful love. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in, in the, the highest, highest and, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, Grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. God did not make death, nor does he rejoice in the destruction of the living. For he fashioned all things that they, may, that they might have being, and the creatures of the world are wholesome. And there is not a destructive drug among them, nor any domain of the netherworld on earth. For justice is undying. For God formed man to be imperishable. The image of his own nature he made him. But by the envy of the devil, death entered the world, and they who belong to his company experience it. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will extol you, O Lord, for you drew me clear and did not let my enemies rejoice over me. O Lord, you brought me up from the netherworld. You preserved me from among those going down into the pit. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Sing praise to the Lord, you, his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name, for his anger lasts but a moment. 
a lifetime his goodwill. At nightfall, weeping enters in, but with the dawn, rejoicing. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Hear, O Lord, and have pity on me. O Lord, be my helper. You changed my mourning into dancing. O Lord, my God, forever will I give you thanks. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as you excel in every respect, in faith, discourse, knowledge, all earnestness, and in the love we have for you, may you excel in this gracious act also. For you know the gracious act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Not that others should have relief while you are burdened, but that as a matter of equality, your abundance at the present time should supply their needs so that their abundance may also supply your needs, that there may be equality. As it is written, whoever had much did not have more, and whoever had little did not have less. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed death and brought life to light through the gospel. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please, come lay your hand on her that she may get well and live. He went off with him and a large crowd followed him and pressed upon him. There was a woman afflicted with hemorrhages for twelve years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors and had spent all that she had, yet she was not helped but only grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She said, If I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately, her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Jesus Aware at once that power had gone out from him, turned around 
in the crowd and asked, Who has touched my clothes? But his disciples said to Jesus, You see how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. The woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding that the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid. Just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, Why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead but asleep, and they ridiculed him. Then he put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, I say to you, arise. The child, the girl, a child of twelve, arose immediately and walked around, and that they were utter, at that they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this, and said that she should be given something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, after 16 months of waiting, that chair, the cathedra, of the Archbishop of Manila is now occupied. And we are so happy that we have an Archbishop in the person of His Eminence, Cardinal Jose Advincula. You may have seen the installation rites last Thursday. On Friday, he celebrated Mass with the lay leaders of the Archdiocese of Manila. And last night, he prayed the evening prayer with the religious men and women doing their apostolate in the Archdiocese. And in his homilies on these celebrations, in his homilies on the first three days of his being the Archbishop of Manila, Cardinal Advincula emphasized, true to his motto as a bishop, Audiam, which means, I will listen, the Cardinal emphasized that he comes as a listening shepherd. Ang bawat obispo po ay merong tinatawag na episcopal moto. Yung kanilang parang vision, yung kanilang nais na gawin sa kanilang paglilingkod. Diyan po sa gitna, sa center aisle ng ating cathedral, 
makikita ninyo yung mga coat of arms ng mga naging arsobispo. At sa baba ng kanilang coat of arms, mababasa ninyo in Latin yung kanilang episcopal motto. Iba't iba po yan. Si Cardinal Advincula sa kanyang kathedra nakalagay, Audiam, I will listen. And so he emphasized over and over again to the priests, to the lay faithful, to the religious men and women that he comes as a listening shepherd. And all shepherds, in fact, should know how to listen. Because Jesus himself is a listening shepherd. This is proven to us by our gospel this Sunday. A synagogue official named Jairus came to Jesus and pleaded with him, My daughter is at the point of death. Please, come lay your hands on her that she may get well and live. Nagpatira pa siya sa paanan ni Jesus at nakiusap siya kay Jesus, Pumunta ka sa amin. Pagalingin mo ang anak kong may sakit. And what was the response of Jesus? He immediately went off with him. Walang tanong-tanong Nung marinig niya ang pakiusap ni Jairus, pinagbigyan niya agad ang kanyang pakiusap. Ni hindi niya itinanong, malala na ba talaga ang sakit ng anak mo? Gaano ba kalayo ang bahay niyo? Baka mahirap pumunta doon. As he listened, to the pleading of this man, of this father, he immediately went off with him. And when he arrived at the house of Jairus, Jesus healed the daughter. In fact, Jesus raised Jairus' daughter back to life. And this proves to us what our first reading tells us today, that God is a God of life. God did not create death. God does not rejoice in death. God always gives life. And God gives life because God knows how to listen. Nakapagbigay ng buhay si Jesus dahil marunong siyang makinig. My dear brothers and sisters, listening gives life. Yung simpleng pakikinig nakapagbibigay pala ng buhay. At ang kabaliktaran nito ay totoo din. Ang hindi pakikinig nagdudulot ng kamatayan. Ang isang doktor kailangan makinig ng mabuti sa sinasabi ng kanyang pasyente. Kasi kung hindi siya makikinig ng mabuti kung ano ba ang nararamdaman, saan ba ang masakit, o ano ba ang nagpapahirap sa taong ito, Kung hindi makikinig ang doktor, baka mali ang gamot na kanyang maibigay. At sa halip na maging sanhi ng kagalingan, maging daan pa ng kamatayan. You see, listening gives life. Sa ating pamilya, magkakaroon ng buhay kung marunong makinig sa isa't isa. Pag nakikinig tayo sa isa't isa, alam natin ano ba ang pinagdaraanan ng ating kasama sa bahay. Meron ba siyang problema? O meron ba siyang masayang gustong ibahagi sa atin? Kapag nagkakaroon ng lugar ang pakikinig sa isa't isa, 
nabubuhayan tayo. Pero kapag walang nakikinig, kahit ang ating tahanan parang patay, walang buhay. Ganyan din sa pamumuno, kailangan ang mga pinuno marunong makinig para makapamuno ng mahusay. Dahil sa pakikinig ng isang pinuno, nalalaman niya ano ba ang kailangan ng aking pinamumunuan. Ano ba ang kanilang pangangailangan sa buhay? Dahil kapag ang isang pinuno hindi nakikinig, baka hindi rin makapaglingkod ng mabuti. That is why Cardinal Advincula said, In order for me to serve you well, I need to listen. And if I may add, In order for us to love truly, We, we need to know how to listen. Sa pakakinig, nakapagbibigay tayo ng buhay. Sa pakikinig, nakapaglilingkod tayo ng tunay. Sa pakikinig, na ma- nakapagmamahal tayo sa bawat isa ng tunay. Listening, my dear brothers and sisters, is also a disposition of humility. Yung pakikinig ay pagpapakita ng pagpapakumbaba. Kadalasan kasi sa ating pananaw, yung mga nagsasalita ay yung mga mas matataas. At yung mga mas mababa, hindi nagsasalita, nakikinig lang sila. Kaya nga kapag may mas mababa, mas bata na nagsasalita, sinasabi natin, sino ka para magsalita sa akin ng ganyan? Sino ka para pakinggan ko? Ikaw ang makinig sa akin, hindi ako makikinig sa iyo. Ang mga nakatataas, nagsasalita. Ang mga nakababa, nakakababa, hindi pwedeng magsalita, makikinig lang sila. Kaya nga, ang Diyos na handang makinig ay pagpapakita ng pagpapakumbaba ng Diyos. And our God is a God who listens to us. St. Paul in our second reading today said, Though he was rich, For your sake, he became poor, so that by his poverty, you might become rich. He is God, but he allowed himself to be humble, to listen to us, so that by listening to us, he might be able to enrich us with his grace, with His healing, and with His salvation. Kaya sana matuto tayong makinig, hindi lamang magsalita. Maganda rin tanungin ang ating sarili, marunong ba tayong makinig? O gusto lang nating magsalita? May mga tao na salita lang ng salita. Ayaw makinig. May mga tao na nakikinig para may ipanglaban doon sa nagsasalita. Makikinig pero hahanapan ng butas yung sinasabi nung nagsasalita. Makikinig para may ipansisira ako sa kanya. Makikinig pero hindi naman tunay ang pakikinig. The famous author Stephen Covey said that the biggest problem in communication we have now is that we listen not to understand, but we listen in order to reply. Makikinig hindi upang umunawa, makikinig upang may maisagot ako sa kanya. Do we really listen to each other? 
My dear brothers and sisters, when we listen to each other, we assume the posture of humility, the posture assumed by God Himself. One final lesson about listening based on our gospel today is that while it is important to listen, we must be discerning what or who to listen to. Mahalagang makinig, pero dapat sinusuri ding mabuti ano ba ang pinakikinggan, sino ba ang pinakikinggan. In our gospel, the woman who was suffering for, from hemorrhages for 12 years was hopeless. Sabi sa ating Ibanghelyo, labing dalawang taon na siyang dinudugo. At kung saan saan na siyang doktor pumunta, hindi siya mapagaling. Lumala pa siya. And she heard about Jesus. Buti na lang nakinig siya sa kanyang narinig tungkol kay Jesus. Siguro marami nagsasabi sa kanya, dito ka pumunta sa manggagamot na ito. Doon ka pumunta sa albularyong yan. But when she heard about Jesus, she went to Jesus and tried to touch the cloak of Jesus. And because she listened, she was healed. Buti na lang, tama ang kanyang pinakinggan. When Jesus arrived at the house of Jairus, the people were already wailing and weeping because the child was already dead. And the people